I am Takilambat Mibol Singh, lecturer in geography. I am teaching geography in class 11 and 12 stand. Good morning, everyone. In the previous classes, we have discussed in detail on the topic, the growth of population in the world. For today, I am going to deliver lecture on the pending or the remaining part of this topic, that is global pattern of population change of growth. As you know that the population of the world has been growing at varying rate all over the world ever since men appear on the surface of the earth. This varying growth of population all over the world also observed at different phases of our human civilization. Say for example in early human civilization when man was engaged in such primary activities as hunting gathering, lumbering, fishing, and herding, the whole population was growing at slow rate. In that society, the population of the world was very small because of the slow growth rate. Even after agriculture and revolution took place between 8,000 to 12,000 years ago, the world population was growing slowly. The expansion of international trade by 16th and 17th century had set a new era for the development of population change at faster rate. The Industrial Revolution started by 18th century has given a technological changes and also impact has given impetus to the rapid growth of population, the development of medical science and health and sanitary conditions of the people in 19th and 20th century has also given a new impetus of stage for the development of human population at faster rate. Again, the growth of the world population can be analyzed among different countries of the world it shows that the growth rate of the population all over the world is highly variable among different countries of the world. It shows that different countries of the world recorded the different rate of population growth. Say, for example, in less developed countries, the population growth was very, very rapid, while in developing countries, the population growth and also rapid, especially in developed countries, the population growth is rather slow and their population size also very small. It is because of socio-economic difference of the people. And the varying rate of population growth among different countries in the world was because of difference in socio-economic status of the people living in that country. In other words, social and the economic status or condition of the people are considered as the prime factor that accelerate the growth of population all over the world at varying rates. This variation in the growth of population was fully explained in a particular theory which was devised by W. S. Thompson, a renowned explorer of America by the years 1929. That theory was popularly known as demographic transition theory. This demographic transition theory was based on the change in mortality, fertility, and its resultant change on the population of the world. It shows the pattern of demographic change from high birth and the high death to low birth and to low death. This theory also explains the change in human society from agrarian rural, illiterate, to industrial, urban, and literate society. 
these three stage model of demographic transition theory has three distinct stages that each stage or each phase represent the variation of the demographic pattern of the world. The first stage is characterized by high birth and the high death. Therefore, the net change in population or the, the growth of population in the first stage remain stagnant that because of equality between birth and death. In other words, the first stage of demographic transition theory characterized by high birth and high death is mainly prevalent in less developed countries in the world. The second stage was characterized by high birth but the low death. Higher birth rate in that second stage is still going on because the agriculture becomes the main, that is the main source of our livelihood to peoples. This population situation that is called population explosion was characterized in those countries, particularly yes, developing countries. Therefore, developing countries are having yes, more population because of rapid growth of population, what we call population explosion. The third stage of demographic transition theory is characterized by low birth and the low death. Therefore, the population of the country or of the world as a whole remain more or less stagnant or decline. This population situation is mainly prevalent in developed countries. The developed countries already aware of the adverse impact of the rapid growth of population. These countries having or passing the second stage of demographic transition theory try to combat, try to control or try to tackle the rapid growth of population by taking up certain measures. They already adopted some population control measures, say for example, yes, imposition of tax on large size population or the large size families. Those families having large number of children or large number of people or members, they have to pay tax. The second measure for controlling population in developing countries is restriction of immigrants. The immigrant peoples, immigrants are nothing but they are come, those people who are coming from other countries and they get settled to this particular country. The developed countries which have already successfully implemented the programs or measures of population control. In that country, there is a population deficit. The shortage of population is also a problem. In the case of developed countries, because of the paucity of the population, due to the shortage of the people, the existing resource potential cannot develop fully. Due to the lack of the maximum utilization of the, the existing natural resources, the economic development of that country also held up. Therefore, developed countries, they have also adopted a certain measure in order to boost up or in order to increase or expand the growth of population. First measure is exemption of tax, especially a large size family. Second point, allowing of immigrants from other countries. When these two measures are fully or successfully implemented, the population of developed countries can increase up to a certain extent. These are the measures or the, these are the points that you have to understand regarding the global pattern of population change. Let's come to the next point, population distribution and population density. Both distribution and the density are used synonymously, but as a matter of fact, the two terms have a different connotation. Both distribution of population and density of population reflects mainland ratio. But the term distribution population refers to the concentration of population over the surface of the earth. In other words, it shows that how people occupy it, how people are managed on the surface of the earth. This is called population distribution. There are certain characteristics. So far, the distribution of population all over the world is concerned. The first point is 
the population distribution all over the world is highly uneven. That is point, the first point uh, you please keep in mind. The second point, it is estimated that more than 90% of the world population uh, is found concentrated in 10% of geographical area. The third point, the remaining 10% of the world population is found scattered over 90% of the world geographical area. These are the points that, that I need to explain about what population distribution. Let's come to the density of population. Population density, the term density refers to the number of people living per unit area of habitable land. Therefore, population density reflects or represents an accurate form of male land ratio. In the case of population density, the exact number of the people living per unit area of habitable land is calculated. That's why it is more accurate form of male land ratio. The population density, like the distribution population we have discussed so far, is highly variable all over the earth. The density population all over the world, across the country, even in our state also, is highly variable. Some state or the, some district of some country or some region of the world are having higher density population than other parts of the world or other countries of the world. There are certain types of population density. There are three important types of population density. The first one is arithmetic density. The second is physiological or nutritional density. The third one is that is agricultural density. The first one, arithmetic density population can also be calculated mathematically, say for example, to tell population is divided by to tell geographic area. The results so obtained by using these tools or relation, we indicate or we get that is aromatic density. But in the case of that is nutritional or physical density, nutritional or physiological density refers to the number of people living by unit area of cultivated land. The thus types of population density that is the agricultural density. Agricultural density refers to the number of person engaged in agricultural activity per square unit of that cultural or cultivable land. Thus, we have discussed of three type population density. Like we have done in the case of population distribution, which is quite uneven all over the world, population density is also highly uneven all over the world. Based on the value of population density, so studied, so recorded, we can categorize, we can bring the entire country into three different areas or regions. The first area is called area of high density. The second region is called area of medium density. The third region is called area of low density. Those countries so far, the area of high density is concerned. Those countries or those areas or those regions of the world where population density or oh, the number of the people living per unit area of land is more than 100. There are three regions that belong to areas of high density population. The first one is, that is Munson Land of Asia. The second is Western Europe. The third one is Northeastern Coastal United States. Let's come to the regions of Munson Land of Asia. Why there is higher density population in Munson Land of Asia? In that region, there are three reasons that support the higher density population in Munson Land of Asia. The first one is availability of great fertile soil. The second factor, that is the heavy rainfall. The third one is intensive rice cultivation. The second reason of high density population is Western Europe. Western Europe reasons. First one is rapid industrialization. As we know that industrial based economy can provide larger size of people or can sustain large size of people. The second point is rapid urbanization. Urban environment or urban economy can sustain, can support large size of people because there is a greater facilities or the people get more social amenities in that society. The third reason or zones of area of high density population 
is northeastern coast and United States. The United States, especially along the eastern coast and plain of United States, is also belong to the areas of high density population. This area also, or this region also, have certain factors that support large size of population. The first one is a large scale immigrants, especially from European in distant past. The first. The second, rapid growth of industrialization or industry. The development of industry is very, very rapid in western coast and area of United States. The third one or the third factor is rapid urbanization rate. Urbanization is also very high. The process of urbanization is also accompanied by the growth of population. Urbanization is urban center can accommodate large size of population, dense rural counterpart. These are the is important points that we need to discuss regarding the areas of population density, higher population density all over the world. This must for today. Next time I will proceed the remaining part of this topic. Thank you.